Okay, so that particular circuit uh, uh, in this uh, diagram, this is basically for your uh, common source amplifier with the uh, resistive load, right? Now, last we have also discussed about the common source amplifier with uh, different types of load like uh, direct connected load and current source load, right? So only this RD will be different, otherwise everything remaining the same. So it is something like that. You have this current source load, source is directly connected to the ground. This is the input signal that you are going to magnify. V1 is used for biasing and you have the supply, this current source load, you are taking the output from this drain terminal. Okay. And you have noticed the expression for the voltage gain. This expression was, if I consider the mod of this, because ultimately, uh, as I have also mentioned in the last class, that if your input is something like that, then the output is an inverted version. Okay? And the expression for the voltage gain, the modulus of this, is given by the GM of these transistors. So if I call these transistors, say, M1, so GM1, and then you have RO1 parallel RO2. RO1 is the output resistance of uh, the transistor M1, and RO2 is the output resistance of that particular current source. Because ultimately, you can re represent that current source ID1 by virtue of some uh, PMOS uh, load. Okay. So what is the problem associated with this one? So ultimately, you have, uh, uh, by virtue of this particular expression, uh, you can increase the, the voltage gain to some extent because uh, you don't have like GM times RD, rather you have GM times RO1 parallel RO2. And this combination RO1 parallel RO2 is uh, typically large with respect to your simple GM, uh, RD. Now still, uh, this particular gain that you have got over there is not a stable one because you have GM present uh, in this case so as a matter of fact, uh, this is not at all stable. It's a function of temperature, it's a function of the bias scan and all these things, right? So therefore, we have also observed another such uh, circuit diagram which involves the diode connected load. So there you have uh, two types of transistor. One transistor is used for amplification and the second transistor is used for or it is used as a load. So it's a diode connected device, so that's why gate and drain, it is shorted, VDD, and you are taking the output from this terminal. And hopefully you have noticed that uh, for this particular case, what was the expression for the uh, voltage gain? If I call this is the MOS1, M1, and this is M2, then what is the expression for the voltage gain? Once again, this mod of AV is given by what is the generating expression? The generating expression was you have the GM of this uh, amplifying device multiplied with the total resistance seen between this terminal, this drain terminal, and the AC ground. So you have one resistance over there. That is basically your RO1 and you have another resistance over here from this terminal to AC ground. What was that resistance? So that resistance was 1 upon GM2 parallel RO2, right? So eventually the, the expression for the voltage gain is nothing but GM1 times RO1 parallel RO2 parallel 1 upon GM2 and which can be approximated to GM1 upon GM2, right? And ultimately, it's the ratio of 2 W by L, W by L1 upon W by L2, right? So we have discussed all these different types of loads, simple resistive load, GMRT, 
current source load for which the expression of the voltage gain is, I mean the mod of the, the voltage gain is going by gm1 multiplied with r1 parallel r2. So here the, uh, the voltage gain has been increased to some extent but it is not stable and on the other hand if I consider the direct connected load there you have uh, this voltage gain expression is like gm1 by gm2 approximately given by gm1 upon gm2 and uh, so uh, that can be represented by virtue of square root of w by l1 by w by l2. So it's much more stable with respect to this one and that one. Okay. Now, uh, apart from these three, so in all these three cases, what you have seen, your source terminal is directly connected to the ground terminal. Source is directly connected to the ground. So it's a common source stage with a resistive load, common source stage with uh, a current source load, and common source stage with a direct connected load. In each of these three cases, we have found that the source terminal is directly connected to the, the DC ground or hard ground. Okay. Now, as you have already studied uh, in case of your uh, BJT based amplifier circuit, now if you connect some resistance from the source terminal to the, to the DC ground, then it can desensitize the radiation. And that particular uh, circuit is known as the common source stage with degeneration. It looks something like that. So once again, uh, for the uh, description part, I have used the resistive load, but you, you, can, uh, you can understand that uh, even if I uh, replace this resistive load by virtue of some current source load or direct connected load, only this expression for this uh, resistance will be the different. Here it is simply RD. Now if I use a current source load, in that case, this RD will be replaced by simply RO of that particular mass, ROP hopefully. And uh, if you replace this RT by virtue of some uh, direct connected load, then in that case it will be replaced by 1 upon GM parallel RO of that device. Right? Simply RT, just remember, okay, you have some resistance over there connected between the, the supply line to the output terminal, the drain terminal. And suppose this resistance is given by RT. It can be uh, RO1, uh, rather R ROP for uh, your current source load. It can be 1 upon GM P where parallel ROP for your uh, direct connected load. Okay, now let us try to understand what happens with this device, with this particular circuit. Now here, unlike the previous case, here you have one uh, resistance, source resistance connected between the, the source terminal to the, to the hard ground, to the DC ground. Also, I have discussed this circuit in my last class, uh, but still, uh, for the sake of uh, completion, uh, I would like to discuss this once again. Now for the bias calculation, uh, uh, you have uh, already connected this particular supply, V1 over there, and this V in is nothing but your uh, input signal that you are going to amplify. So what about the DC analysis? So for DC case, this uh, V1 for DC case, this uh, V1 will be present and V in this will be absent, right? So you have for this circuit, uh, you have VDD, you have RT present over there, this MOS is present, this RS is present, V1 and this V in is absent. So what will be the bias calculation? So V1 is nothing but, what is that V1? This voltage, this voltage here to ground, V1 that is equal to this drop plus this. So what is this? This is nothing but your VGS get to source plus the drop across this resistance. So last time, since you, you don't have any such explicit resistance connected between the source terminal to the AC ground, to, to the DC ground, so therefore that particular voltage that you have connected over there, so this is equal to your get to source voltage. Now this time, your V1 is given by VGS, the get to source voltage, DC get to source voltage, plus ID times RS, the current which is flowing through the mm, resistance RS, that is the drain current. So V1 is equal to VGS plus ID times RS. And uh, you know that what is the relation between this ID and uh, this VGS? If, if I assume that the device is operating in the saturation region, then the condition is that ID is or then the expression is that ID is equal to half mu and C ox, W over L, VGS minus VTH whole square. And if you would like to incorporate the channel and modulation, then it should be uh, multiplied with 1 plus lambda 2 minus. Okay? And uh, you know, to ensure that the device remains in the saturation, in the DC condition, then this drain to source voltage should be greater than the gate to source minus the threshold voltage or in other words, the drain voltage should be greater than the gate voltage minus the threshold voltage. So what is your drain voltage over here? The absolute value of the drain voltage? What is the absolute value of this potential over there? This VDD minus the ID times RT. 
right? The absolute value of the potential uh, at this particular terminal. So, V D minus I D times R D, it should be greater than the gate voltage minus the threshold voltage. So, over here, uh, it is simply uh, V1 minus VTH. So, it's it's known as a common source stage with degeneration. And if you'd like to observe the behavior of this particular circuit in small signal regime, then what is the corresponding small signal model? You have uh, these three uh, terminal, gate terminal, source terminal, drain terminal. Between gate to source, the applied voltage is V1. And between drain to source, what you have? In between drain to source, you have G1 times V1. Okay? And uh, apart from that, you can also incorporate the R over there because in this particular slide, the effect of the channel in modulation is simply neglected. So that's why R is not present. If R is there, then R should be connected between the drain terminal and the source. Remember, the R is connected between the drain and the source, not between the drain and the ground. Here, source is not grounded. Everywhere in, in your small signal model, this is the typical small signal model for any MOS device. Suppose this is your gate terminal, this is the drain terminal, this is the source terminal. So between gate to source, suppose this voltage is say V1. So between drain to source, you have a voltage dependent current source whose magnitude is Gm times V1. And between drain to source, you have R0. The source might be connected to ground, source might not be connected to ground. Here the source is not connected to ground directly. Source is connected to ground through RS. Okay. So, what happens here? So, Gm times V1. So, in this case, uh, we have just neglected the channel and modulation. So, that's R0 is there, is, is not there. But if you'd like to incorporate the channel and modulation, then this R0 should be present between the drain and the source, not between the drain and the ground. What are the position of RT? RT is connected between the drain and the power supply. So, power supply is equivalent to AC ground. So, from a drain to AC ground, you have this RD. And between source and AC ground, you have this RS. Okay. Now, if uh, this voltage is your output voltage V out, and uh, if the resistance over there is RD, then what is the current flowing through this? It's simply V out upon RD. Right? Now, if I apply a KCL at this particular node, so if the current flowing through, through this path is V out upon RD, then the current flowing through this path should be minus V out upon RD. And this minus V out upon RD is nothing but your, and that current is flowing, so that is equal to Gm times V1, and the same current is also flowing through this, because there is no current which can flow through this path, it's isolated. This part is isolated, between gate to source there is no current. Okay, so your Gm V1 is given by minus V out upon RD, so from that you can calculate what is the expression for V1, that is minus V out upon GMRT and then you can apply KVL over here. What is that? So V in is equal to that voltage equal to this voltage plus this voltage. That means V in is equal to V1 this voltage plus minus V out upon RT times RS. Okay. And then ultimately what you are getting? V in is equal to V1 minus V out Rs by Rd. Then ultimately, uh, the expression for V is something like that. V is equal to minus V out upon Rd into 1 by Gm plus Rs. So, you can uh, write down the expression for the final gain, which is nothing but the expression for the final gain Av is given by V out upon V that is equal to minus Rd upon 1 by Gm plus Rs. Last we have also found out the expression for the voltage gain, if you can remember. The expression was something like that. The expression was mod of AV if I write. It was something like Gm times Rd divided by 1 plus Gm times Rs. Can you remember that expression? Gm Rd by 1 plus Gm Rs. Last we have already developed this one. So that can be represented like Rd divided by 1 by Gm plus Rs. The same expression, but this has been written using a different notation. So, what is what is the use of writing this AV in that particular form? Rd upon 1 upon Gm plus Rs. Because that expression was good, Gm Rd 1 plus Gm Rs. The thing is that, actually we have divided this entire thing, the new matter divided by Gm. But why? Simply Rd upon 1 by Gm plus Rs. What is the reason? The reason is that, 
as I've told you, you, don't, you, you must not expect that you have only one uh, isolated RD present over there, or isolated RS present over there. Instead of having some simple RD, you can have, uh, say, a current source load, or direct connected load, or a combination of these. Right. So in that case, uh, it is better to isolate those resistance values in the expression of the voltage gain. So what I have ultimately, the expression of the voltage gain says that, the expression of the voltage gain says that uh, this is nothing but for the minus because there will be phase reversal. Apart from that, the numerator you have RD, in the denominator you have 1 upon GM plus RS. So what is RD over there? This is nothing but the resistance tied between the drain and the AC drum. Right. So actually, if we just take a look at the, the circuit diagram, it is something like that, no? This is the circuit diagram, VTD, you have RD over there, you have RS over there, and uh, some bias, and then this input, and this bias is present, V1. We are taking the output from this terminal. So from here to ground, from here to AC ground, what is the resistance? That is RD. If I simply neglect the channel length modulation, right? And from here tracing ground, what is the resistance? That is RS. So now, in this expression, we have just neglected the channel and modulation. Then ultimately, what is the expression? Is minus, probably not the minus. In the numerator, you have the resistance tied between the drain and the AC ground. So here, if I just simply neglect the channel and modulation, what is the resistance between this point and the AC ground? RD only. And then 1 upon GM, 1 upon GM of the amplifying device, plus the resistance tied between the source and the AC ground. Okay, so that is the final expression of the voltage gain. Now, instead of simple RD, if I have a current source load or a direct connected load, then you can understand what should be my modified expression. If you know this generic form, that okay, for a, a common source stage with the degeneration, if the expression of the voltage is something like that, the resistance tied between the drain and the AC ground divided by 1 upon GM plus the resistance tied between the source and the AC ground, then for any such uh, combination of RD and RS, you'll be able to find out the expression of the voltage gain without going to the detail calculation. Can we get the point? Okay, so. Yes, and that is quite obvious that uh, if this GMRS is much, much greater than 1, in that case, uh, you can simply neglect this one. Uh, I mean, uh, you can simply neglect this one with respect to GMRS, and then finally, the expression of the voltage gain is nothing but the ratio of, is nothing but the ratio of two resistances, RD and RS, minus RD upon RS. That means the gain is much more stable. In the expression of this, if is equal to uh, minus RT by RS, so you don't have any explicit value of GM. It's basically, it's independent of your temperature, it's independent of the bias current. And that is the basic flavor of the common source stage with degeneration. Okay. Now suppose, uh, now instead of having, so now hopefully, now you can understand what is that particular circuit. It looks uh, complicated to some extent, but you have to identify it. Right? What is that? What is that? You have three MOS devices over there. M1, M2, M3. Yeah, both of them are direct connected. So first of all, you have to identify which one is actually acting as, as an amplifying device. You have three MOS devices in this case. Three MOS devices. So you know, the, okay. then you can uh, actually correlate this one. You can actually correlate this one with this circuit. You have RD there, R is there. And this is your input side. Now what we are doing, we are replacing this RT by means of some uh, direct connected device, M2, and we are also replacing this RS by means of another direct connected device, that is M3. And if you know this uh, uh, generic expression for the voltage gain, then uh, hopefully you will be able to find out. Channel length modulation is included for uh, uh, this M2 and M3. Now, 
it is not given for m1 but if you like to incorporate m1 then obviously uh, the expression for the voltage will be different because the for m1 what is the resistance connected between the drain and the ac ground it's not on ro it's not ro1 the resistance which is connected between the drain and the ac ground uh, drain and the source is ro or rather ro1 right so in that case you have to do some explicit mathematical calculation to find out the final expression here we have considered the channel modulation for m2 and only for m3 not for m1 so what is rt here rt is nothing but 1 upon gm to parallel ro2 what is rs 1 upon gm to parallel ro3 so if you just go by this formula now you know the standard expression minus rd upon 1 plus 1 by gm plus rs then rt is replaced by simply 1 upon gm2 parallel ro2 and rs is replaced by 1 upon gm3 parallel ro3 now if you know this formula then even if you have three mos devices you are not supposed to draw the small signal model for each of these three in that case the, the overall calculation will be even more tedious right you have you have noticed that okay if i have a simple rt over there you have simple rs over there and i have only one mos then i'll be able to find out what is the expression and how does it uh, how can it be represented in that particular form minus rt upon 1 by gm plus rs and then you have to identify in this comp in this uh, compound circuit then you have to identify what is my rt and what is my rs and which one is actually my amplifying device right and based on that you can just uh, substitute those values of rt and rs in the final expression and you'll be able to find out the value for the voltage gain if you do not know these tricks then obviously you have to once you get this circuit then uh, you have to draw the small signal model and that will be even more complicated right okay then the uh, then the qualitative analysis and hopefully uh, i have uh, already explained this one uh, i have explained this one this qualitative analysis last day still yes so we have discussed this one in the last class that uh, you have two circuits the first one the circuit number one circuit one is for a common source stage without any degeneration without any degeneration that means your source is directly connected to the dc ground and the second one the circuit two is a common source stage with degeneration that means there is a resistance connected between the source and the uh, hard ground dc ground and second stage uh, second circuit is known as the common source stage with degeneration first one is without degeneration now mathematically you have uh, got this answer that means uh, for the first case the expression of the voltage gain is given by uh, i mean minus gm times rd for the second case it is given by almost minus rd upon rs approximately minus rd upon rs or gmrt by 1 plus gmrs with a minus an outset that means what the second circuit can desensitize the gain with respect to the first circuit so that expression you have got mathematically and uh, if you would like to uh, find out the same thing or you'd like if you would like to analyze the same thing from the analytical uh, point of view then what i can get suppose over here for the first circuit suppose your input signal increases by some amount of delta v there is a change in input signal either positive change or negative change so here only the positive change has been identified so if the input has been changed by an amount of delta v then since the source is connected to ground and the input is connected to the gate so as a matter of fact your gate source voltage will also increase by delta v and as a matter of fact the drain current will also increase by gm1 times delta v there is no control internally provided by the circuit so that it can restrict the the change in the gate source voltage either in the positive direction or in the negative direction so here the change has been shown in the positive direction so it's plus delta v so if gate voltage changes by plus delta v then the gate source voltage also increases by plus delta v and then the drain current also increases by gm1 times delta v right now what happens in the second case in the second case uh, suppose one second i change the gate voltage by or rather this uh, input voltage by an amount say delta v then what is your say about the source potential i have already mentioned this one in the last class what about the status of the source potential you may argue okay the source potential might be constant that is your first assumption first assumption okay let's assume that the source potential is constant 
And if the source potential is constant and gate potential increases, then what happens? Your gate source potential will increase. Now if gate source increases, gate source voltage increases, the corresponding drain current will also increase. If the drain current increases, so that drain current will flow through this RS. So the drop increases and that drop is nothing but your source potential. Right? But that is not the case. So what are the assumptions? Assumption was that the VS2 is constant. The source potential, so, I mean that terminal, uh, source 2 uh, of this particular MOS because uh, for the circuit 1 it was source 1 and for the circuit 2 it is source 2. So initially we have assumed that uh, even if I increase the, the gate voltage over there, the input voltage over there, let us assume that the source potential is constant. So had this been the case, then the gate source drop will increase and as a matter of fact you have more current flowing through this RS2. So if you have more current, that means the more drop, so this potential will also increase by some amount, it is not constant. So let us assume that if the input side increases by an amount say delta V, then the source voltage suppose it increases by some delta V dash. Okay, where delta V dash is less than delta V. Then what happens? What about the gate source potential difference? The gate voltage increases by delta V, the source voltage increases by delta V dash. So gate source will increase by delta V minus delta V dash. So as a matter of fact, the, the current, the new current, the previous with the kind was ID2, and now this current is given by ID2 plus GM2 times delta V minus delta V test. So previously, the current increases by GM1 times the, the, the change in the gate voltage. The ID1 moves from ID1 to GM1 times delta V. So the ID1 increases by an amount of GM1 times delta V previously. Now this time, the corresponding drain current increases by GM2 times delta V minus delta V test. Okay. Delta V minus delta V dash. That means this particular circuit degenerates the corresponding change or desensitizes the, the change in the input fluctuation. That means the second circuit is much more stable with respect to the first circuit as compared to the first circuit. The end of the same okay. Yes, the gain will be reduced. Yes. As you already noticed, na, this it was minus GMRT for the first case. And for the second case, it is minus GMRD in the numerator. The denominator you have something, it's not 1. 1 plus GMRS. The numerator being the same, minus GMRT in both the two cases. But the denominator for the first one, it was only 1, simple 1. The second case, it is 1 plus GMRS. So gain is reduced. More stable, but the gain is reduced. Yeah, the same thing. And we have also explained this one in the, in the last class, hopefully. The same thing. Okay. Okay, fine. So, now what happens? So, now uh, you are familiar with uh, different types of uh, common source stage. Common source stage with resistive load, common source stage with uh, current source load, common source stage with direct connected load, common source degeneration, source degeneration. Right. Now, as long as your understanding about the amplifier design is concerned, you would like to have higher gain, more stable gain, more swing. Less power consumption, more bandwidth. So these are the requirements from the user side. Okay. Now, what is the maximum gain you can achieve? Forget the stability right at this moment. What is the maximum gain that you can achieve here using this common source change? Using current source load. Using current source load, you can have the maximum gain out of all such possibilities. And that expression was given by, if I consider the magnitude only, that is GM times RO of the amplifying device in parallel with RO of the RO of the current source. Okay. Now the thing is that for the current source, we have already noticed that the whenever we have realized this current source by virtue of some uh, N MOS or P MOS, the expression of the output resistance is given by, or the resistance of the current source is given by R U. That is 1 upon lambda I. But that is not the ideal one. What I am saying is that, let me just once again, yes. So you notice that okay, uh, a 
in this particular fashion can be used as a as a current source. Although you have three terminals for MOS, forget about the uh, body terminal right at this moment. You have three terminals, gate, drain, and source. And if I provide a corresponding bias between the gate and source so that the device operates in the saturation region, then I have only two terminals accessible from the external world. One is your drain terminal, second one is your source terminal. And the expression of the voltage, uh, expression of this uh, drain current is given by half mu and Cox double over L into Vgs minus Vt whole square. In which case your so in that case, if I if I just calculate del i t by del v t, what is that? What is that del i t? For the first case, if I just simply calculate del i t upon del v t, what should be the value? No? First one. So it means black. I t is equal to half mu and c of w over l uh, vgs minus v t is whole square. That is the expression for the current in saturation region. Now you have this current and uh, suppose this voltage is there, that is v t s. And how to calculate the expression of the output resistance or resistance is nothing but del, I, del VTS by del ID, right? So variation of this uh, current with respect to the variation of this voltage, VTS. So for the first case, ID is equal to half mu and C of W over L into VGS minus VTS whole square. If you'd like to calculate the this uh, fluctuation, rather I, del ID upon del VTS, variation of this ID with respect to the variation of this VTS, what is that value? Zero. Right? So your conductance is zero, del idea of an is zero, output conductance zero. So what is the output resistance to the current source? Ideally infinite. So that is the ideal case. So you expect that the, it's, uh, there, I mean, there is no slope. The slope is zero over there. Right? It's a constant straight line. Straight line parallel to the your uh, VDS axis, horizontal axis, in the ID characteristics. Right? And in the second case, if I incorporate the channel modulation, then the expression becomes half mu and C of W over L. Vgs minus Vt whole square into 1 plus lambda Vts and then if you calculate del ID upon del Vts and then 1 upon that, inverse of that, that will give you the value of this R0 which is given by 1 upon lambda ID. Okay, now typically, so without standard length modulation, without standard length modulation, when lambda is equal to uh, 0, in that case, without standard length modulation, your output resistance is equal to infinite. And if not, if we incorporate channel length modulation, then our output resistance is finite, the resistance of this current source is finite, if I incorporate channel length modulation. Now what is the typical value of this R0? So ideally, you should expect that it should be infinite. Ideally, it should be infinite. For the ideal current source, you, you should expect that the corresponding uh, output resistance is equal to Okay? That means even if you change this uh, terminal voltage, VDS, the current remains constant. But actually, even if you, if you, if you change the VDS value, the, the terminal potential, there is a some change in the, in the drain value. Okay. So, typically, typically, suppose, uh, let's assume your uh, ID is equal to, the drain current is equal to, say, 1 milliampere. And suppose lambda, you consider it to be, say, 0 0.1 volt inverse. Okay. Now, if you just uh, plug in this value, then what is the value of R0? It's coming out to be? What is that? Simply calculate this on 1 upon lambda 10 kilo ohms. So R0 is coming out to be 10 kilo ohms. So to some extent you are happy that okay, R0 is equal to 10 kilo ohms. It's a large, fine. But sometimes if you compare this with RD, and typical RD can be presented uh, by, uh, by means of few kilo ohms or so, then uh, you cannot have uh, that much advantage out of this uh, current source load. Sometimes you are much more aggressive. That okay, no, this uh, R0 is equal to 10 kilos, you are not happy. You are even more greedy. That okay, I have to increase the, the resistance of this uh, current source to some extent. Because it is nowhere near the infinity. 10 kilo ohms. Typically, your R0, like ID is equal to 1 milliampere and your lambda is equal to 0 0.1 volt inwards. Typically, then R0 is equal to 10 kilo ohms. You are nowhere near the infinity model. Infinity means what? Few hundreds of mega ohms, or something like that. They are nowhere near. So, R0 is equal to 10 kilo. So, you have to find out some means by virtue of which you can also increase this output resistance or resistance of, of the current source. So, as of now, you have realized the current source using a single MOS device. Right? Only one MOS, either N MOS or P MOS. And the current source, I mean, the expression of this R0 is like 1 upon lambda I. Whether it is a N MOS based current source or a P MOS based current source. It is given by 1 upon lambda I. But you are not happy with this R0 value. 10 kilo ohms is not good. Okay? So, 
What is the way out? The way out is that instead of using only one single uh, MOS, you can also degenerate that MOS by another resistance. And let us see what happens. That I already discussed. That lambda is equal to zero means a straight line. I D F E D S straight line. Lambda not equal to zero means there is a slope. Now let's degenerate this one. So here you have this MOS, gate drain source, and now I am not considering this my the source as my external terminal. Rather, I connect one resistance over there. Previously, you have this. Two terminals available to you, drain and source, and between gate to source, you have connected some battery, which is greater than the threshold voltage, uh, to, so, you know, to ensure that uh, the device operates in the saturation region. Okay. Now this time, instead of connecting the source terminal, I mean, instead of connecting the external terminal directly to the source, I connect another resistance from here to the, to the external terminal, from the source to the external terminal, something like that. It's a kind of degeneration. That I already noticed. Degeneration, right? Now, what is the advantage out of this? What advantage you are getting? Is there any advantage? One second. Remember that this circuit you, uh, for this particular thing, you have only two terminals available to you. One is A and, and another is B. So it can be used as a two-terminal device. It cannot be used as an amplifier. It's a two-terminal device because between get to uh, this uh, this particular terminal, only voltage is equal to V naught. Bias to V naught. And I would like to find out what is the resistance. So, how to find out the resistance between the terminal A and B? You have to draw the small signal model for that, right? So, get drain source. These are the three terminals. Between get to source, suppose the voltage difference is V1. So, you should have a voltage dependent current source between drain to source. That is GM times V1. And we have one R not between drain and source, not between drain and ground, between drain and source. You have one voltage dependent current source. Hey, yeah, GMP1 and this R not is there between drain and the source, not between drain and ground. This output resistance for this MOS itself. What else? You have another resistance between the source and the AC ground, or source and the uh, DC ground. You can see over there. So. That is RS. What about the gate potential? This is the reference terminal. This is the reference terminal, point B. And with respect to that, what is the gate potential? That is constant, that is V naught. So in the small signal model, this is simply AC ground. So gate is at AC ground. Okay? And then I am having two terminals available to me. One is this terminal, drain terminal, and second one is a reference terminal, that is the ground terminal. And I would like to find out what is the resistance provided by this entire combination, including this RS. Right? So first, first, I draw the small signal model, make all the independent voltage source inactive, and then you just apply some external voltage, test voltage from the outside, and measure the current. So the test voltage over here is Vx, and you measure the current Ix. Okay. Okay, fine. So, if the current flowing through this terminal is I x, so over here it is having two different components. One is through this, and second one is through this. Once again, these two current will combine at this point and sum up over there, and it will flow through this. So the current which is entering over there, so ultimately it's a black box. It's a black box, so the current which is entering this black box and the current which is leaving this black box will be the same. So the current that is entering is Ix, and this kind is also Ix because there is no current over there. Current cannot disappear, so obviously this kind is Ix. So if I call this potential equal to say V dash, so what is V dash then? V dash is equal to Ix times Rs. Okay? And uh, if I apply a KVL over there, so what, is, what should be the result? V1 plus V dash that is equal to 0. That means V1 is equal to minus V dash. If I apply KVL in this group. V1 plus V dash that is equal to 0. That means V1 is equal to minus V dash. And if I call this current, let it be this current is equal to I0, then this I0 current is this current 
minus this gm v1 current. So, I0 is equal to Ix minus gm v1 and v1 is equal to minus v dash. So, what you are getting? Ix plus gm v dash and then you can also represent v dash by virtue of Ix rs. Then ultimately I0 is given by Ix into 1 plus gm rs. That is I, the expression for this I0. Okay. Then I have to relate this Vx. So now I have to apply KVL. I have to apply KVL in this particular loop over here. What is that? So Vx is equal to the drop across the resistance R0 plus the drop across the resistance Rs. So Vx is equal to I0 R0, the current which is flowing through R0 and the current which is flowing through Rs is Ix. So Vx is equal to I0 R0 plus Ix Rs. Then ultimately, what you are getting, Vx is equal to Ix into 1 plus Gmrs times R0. If I just substitute this value for I0, already I have got the expression for I0 given over there, Ix into 1 plus Gmrs. Ix is equal to, uh, I0 is equal to Ix into 1 plus Gmrs. And then if I just substitute this one, then ultimately, what I am getting, Vx is equal to Ix into 1 plus Gmrs times R0 plus Rs. And then if you find out this output resistance Vx upon Ix, that is given by 1 plus Gmrs time R0 plus Rs or 1 plus Gmr times Rs plus R0. So using a simple NMOS device as a current source, what was your output resistance of the current source? It was simply Huh? Now, one current source and this has been realized using a single NMOS or PMOS device. What is the expression for the output resistance? What is the expression for the resistance for the current source? Only simply R0, RO. Now here, if you just degenerate this R0, or if you degenerate this particular uh, NMOS by another resistance, RS, then what is the expression for the uh, resistance? This is RO, okay, you have RO over there. You have RO, so that was the pre previously obtained uh, output resistance plus this value, 1 plus GMRO times RS. So that is large with respect to unity. So that means your output resistance is increased by this amount. So either you can represent this expression like 1 plus GMRS times RO plus RS or 1 plus GMRO times RS plus RO. I think this one, the second expression is even more convenient to remember. Previously, without degeneration, when Rs is equal to 0, the expression for the resistance is given by R0. When Rs is non-zero, then this is multiplied with this uh, 1 plus GMR terms, 1 plus GMR times Rs plus R0. So, the output resistance of this combination, uh, this current source with degeneration. So, it's, it's not an amplifier with degeneration, it's not a common source with degeneration. We have already studied what is the, uh, what is the uh, notion of uh, this degeneration for a common source stage amplifier. Now that, that notion of degeneration is now applied in the context of the, of the you know, design of current source. Can you get the point? Last time while we have discussed the common source stage with degeneration, we have noticed that even if you change the input voltage by some amount for a common source stage with degeneration, you have seen that uh, the corresponding current cannot increase by that amount. It is not by gm times delta beta, that is gm times delta v minus delta beta. So what was the, the philosophy behind that? Without degeneration, if the input changes by delta v, the input voltage changes by delta v, the output current changes by gm times delta v. For the common source stage with degeneration, if the input changes by delta v, then the output current changes by gm times delta v minus some delta v. That means for the second case, for the common source stage with regeneration, it prevents, it prevents the corresponding change in the current, even if the change in the voltage is the same. Right. So what is, so in your mind, can you understand something? Can you sense something? That means, okay, uh, voltage changes by some amount, but the current cannot be changed by the proportionate amount. That means for the second case, when common source stage with degeneration is uh, introduced, it implies higher resistance. It implies higher resistance. And then we have just uh, 
invoke that concept for the design of MOS based currencies. Using a single MOS device, the corresponding resistance was given by R0. And if you just uh, degenerate that particular uh, MOS, whether it be NMOS or PMOS, by another resistance RS, then the expression for the resistance is increased by some amount. It's not simply R0, rather, this R0 plus 1 plus GMR times RS. Okay, that means here, uh, previously it was like, uh, say for example, it was like 10 kilos we have got. And you have some GMR so that value is close to 10 or 15, something like that. And if you consider an RS value equal to say another 1 kilo ohms or so, then obviously 10 into 1 kilo ohms, another 10 or 20 kilo ohms can be added. Depending upon the value of this GMR or the value of this RS. Okay, typically say for example, let's consider last time we have got the R0 equal to 10 kilo ohms. This RS. This RS you can also realize by means of another current source, right? So this RS can also be represented by mm. say another 10 kilo ohms, for example. And this GMR typically which is the intrinsic gain of the transistor, say let it be say approximately say 10. The intrinsic gain of the transistor, GMR. Then ultimately it's 110. Close to that. Because it was only 10 kilo ohms. Now this 10 kilos plus another 10 plus 10 into 10, 100. It has been increased from 10 kilos to 110 kilos. Right. That is the description. And then finally we have uh, in this particular case, uh, we have used a uh, resistance, right? If I use the resistance over there, the expression was 1 plus GMR times RS plus R1. Now remember once again, this resistance cannot be simple resistance, right? So once again, I have to realize this resistance even for a, a current source uh, load with regeneration. This resistance is also replaced by another current source. Can you get the point? So therefore, now take a look at this circuit. Seems to be complicated, no? This one? Mm. This is the main current source. I mean the main, uh, your uh, initial uh, MOS device M1. And this M1 is degenerated by another resistance. That was the, initially you have started with this M1. And you have got some resistance, I mean, we have resistance given by R0 only, or R0 1. And then this particular MOS device is degenerated by another resistance, RS. The expression was 1 plus GMR times RS plus R0. And then this RS is replaced by the current source, that is M2, with a different biasing over there. Okay? So then, between this terminal, uh, between this terminal A and terminal B, if you calculate the, the resistance, what is that? It's basically 1 plus, 1 plus, this, this is the main MOS device, and the device is degenerated by the second MOS. Okay, so what is the expression? 1 plus GMRO. 1 plus GMRO times RS. So 1 plus GM1, so it stands for, so this first GM stands for the first MOS, this one. So 1 plus GM1 times, GM1 times RO1, 1 plus GMRO times RS. What is that RS? The degenerated resistance, that means the resistance provided by this, this MOS. It's simple RO2, right? So 1 plus GM1 RO1 times RO2 plus RO1. Is it okay? 1 plus GM1, so that is the easier way to remember it. Previously it was simply RO and with regeneration it becomes 1 plus GM1 times R is plus. Right, so 1 plus which, which GM to consider? Which GM? The main MOS. 
which is used as a current source and this MOS is used for the degeneration. So 1 plus GM1 times RO1 times RS, RS resulting from this MOS that is RO2 plus RO1. So by virtue of this arrangement, you can increase the resistance. You can increase the resistance of a current source by significant amount. So you understood the common source stage, common source amplifier stage with degeneration in isolation. You understood the common source amplifier stage with current source load in isolation, and then the current source you can realize using a single NMOS or PMOS, or you can also invoke the notion of this degeneration into the design of a current source using NMOS or PMOS. Clear? Yeah. I think that ends our discussion on the common source stage amplifier and in the next class I will be talking about the common drain stage and the common gate stage subsequently.